Hi, I am Miko Eclipse. I am a content writer and I'm a digital nomad for around three years already. So how did I get into remote stuff? It was in 2017. Back then, I was actually doing nothing. I was just in business. And then my friend, Serena, called me. She was just asking me to buy some stuff from Japan. And then, well, I'm a good friend, so I bought her some stuff. And when we met up, we were talking about this and that. And then she told me, why not apply? in remote staff, we have an opening for a writer. So I was like, uh, I was not doing anything, so why not? Why not? I really don't have that much experience in remote working yet, but I do have experiences in other endeavors, in business and all. So I, I was thinking, why not? Just try it. And then I, I got in, I got in. So back then, I, I didn't really need a remote job, but from 2017 onward, there are so many things that have happened. There are so many things, so many tragedies, so many emergencies. Some of my sources of income, it stopped and all. So I was really thankful when I was introduced to remote staff. Because because of them, I have a consistent cash flow. Actually, in remote staff, I have been with around three clients already. So. When a client contract ends, they find other other clients for me. And for me, as, as someone who needs consistent flow of income, that's good for me. At least, there's continuity. There's continuity in what I can earn. So, for my journey in remote staff, adjustment-wise, there's not really much adjustment because uh, Filipinos can really adapt well in situations and I'm familiar also with online tools and all so it's not really much of an adjustment for me it's more of adjusting like setting up this time only for work setting it up this time so that uh, I can go around the countries I'm into communication it's it's not really an adjustment but most most that's the biggest uh, drawback for them because well it's easier to talk when you you know and you you, you are face to face with a person right but in remote working it's not that easy because well you just see you just see words you just see emojis right so you 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 do have to sense what they're saying so that's the first adjustments for me right now that's not really a problem i'm with really a really good team remote staff is really great in supporting me in my endeavors in my work and all and what i really love about this opportunity is i can do what i wanted what i want to do after after work so i do travel around it opened a lot of opportunities for me in the remote working world, in the uh, live streaming industry, I'm a Shopee live streamer also. So that's 6 to 7 p.m. Mondays to Thursdays and Saturdays. Ha! Plug pa. But it opened a lot of opportunities that would not have happened if I didn't have like a stable fixed income. So that's what I really loved about remote stuff. What should more people know about working remotely? Well, right now, I mean, almost everyone wants a uh, remote work because of the pandemic and all. But the common misconception is remote working is easy. Actually, it can extend to remote work is not work. Just some easy stuff that you can that you can get much money or what. That's not true. Remote working is a career. Right now, I'm building my writing career in this in this field. You need to learn new stuff. You need to hone your skills, and it's not just it's not just a side gig or something. You can you can bank on a livelihood livelihood with remote working. People should know that well. Remote working is the the opportunities are real. But you do have to create value for your clients so that pe so that they can wave well, pay you well, and you can build a lifestyle on top of it. 
Mental health wise, when I was traveling, it's more of the loneliness. The loneliness, I don't really get to speak to a lot of people. But I found a solution for that. I, I just, well, get connected with my friends, get connected with my family through social media, through Messenger, Skype, Viber, and all. So, mental health wise, I'm also doing a gratitude journal. It's not really a journal. I just, every night before I sleep, I list down all the things that I'm thankful for. Maybe I'm, I'm thankful for the food. I'm thankful for my job. I'm thankful for anything, even the smallest things. And that really helped me in my mental health. So I think mental health wise, you need to find what works for you. The journaling, the the constant communication that worked for me I don't know if it will work for you but you need to find something that will that will balance out that will balance out the isolation because we're social beings so you should find things that should balance out uh, your work and your social life okay so this is a weird question uh, they're asking me for skincare tips I don't really have the best skin in the world, but skincare tips, I think you just need to sleep 6 to 8 hours a day. Now I, I just sleep 6 hours, but it's okay. 6 hours a day, eat good food, find the right products for you, for your skin type. I, I wouldn't delve much on it already because, well, it's a really broad topic, no? So, there, that's my skincare tips. Eat well, sleep well, and use products for you. What do you like best about remote working? Me, uh, I like the opportunities that it gave me. For example, if I was working for an office-based job, I mean, no offense for an office-based job, but if I was part of an office-based job, firstly, I will have problems now because of the pandemic. Secondly, I wouldn't have much time, especially in the Philippines, to explore other options. Just, well, first, is it's the traffic. If you commute three hours to five hours per day, depending if it's raining or depending if there's a concert somewhere in Mall of Asia, that five hours, it's valuable. You can do, you can find another skill, you can venture out in other opportunities. For me, I, I am a travel blogger. I do videos in YouTube. I also do live streaming in Shopee. I wouldn't have done that if I was not working remotely. But what's good about remote working is you have the option to do what you love if after. So me, I love traveling. I love meeting new people. And I think you can get it also if you start working remotely. Between your first year with remote staff and now, what has changed? More of, I have higher skill level so I can finish tasks better. I ventured out on other opportunities, opportunities that I like outside. I have a choice. There's so much opportunities out there that you can grab on things just because you have more time. What advice would you give aspiring remote workers? Well, first of all, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to try opportunities. Me, I, I don't really like what ifs. I don't like the what ifs in my life. So, if I didn't try, if I didn't at least try to apply in remote stuff or to other opportunities for that matter, I wouldn't be here. So, actually that one, do not be afraid to try. And if just in case you didn't get the opportunity, find ways and find opportunities. Find training, skills development programs that can help you achieve the skill level so that you are employable after. So there, that's my two advice. Don't be afraid and find opportunities to learn so that you can have a marketable skill for remote working. There.